Today is the day, boys and girls, that the 1.36 update alongside the King of Kings content pack is released. Lots of changes have been made to the Middle East ranging from Egypt to Persia with a sprinkle of Byzantium in there for my fellow filthy Roma booze. Though today's video doesn't have much to do with that, we're still going to be taking a look at it because today we are going to be seeing what happens to the world when every single province has been changed to mountain terrain, as the results from the all farmland scenario were pretty interesting. So stick around to see how that goes, and why not like the video and subscribe while you're here. Plenty of EU4 content to come and a mega campaign from Imperator through Hoi4 at 50k on the channel. I also have some scripts in the works for some different stuff, so make sure that you ding the bell when you subscribe so you don't miss an upload. Of course, I mentioned in the previous one about farmlands lowering the dev cost. This one is going to raise the dev cost, as I would have said in the intro. So we're probably going to see quite a bit less development this time around, if I had to guess. But then again, the AI might just go into like mana debt so they can dev up their coal provinces. But, you know, we'll see. And I'm sure I probably would have mentioned this in the intro, but uh, we are going ahead and running this in 1.36 with King of Kings uh, installed. So maybe we'll see some cool stuff going on. Over here, I would love to see some Egyptian stomping or maybe a, a very cool looking Persia. Of course, you know, I'm going to root for Byzantium, but, um, you know, we know how that usually goes. But if you guys want to see a video where Byzantium is uh, buffed, might be cool to see. Let me know in the comments below. Also, Farce has a new color, which is uh, definitely an ongoing meme for the game at this point. Yellow Farce is the best Farce. You can't convince me otherwise, but Teal Farce is cool. I think I like it better than pink. It's not the best example here, but you can definitely see that the Siege of Constantinople is going to take quite a bit longer than it normally would. They uh, just happen to have increased defensive from uh, an event, but they do have the 25% from the uh, mountains terrain, and uh, that will apply to every single siege, not just sieges of forts, fort province sieges, everything. So that's going to be pretty rough. Yeah, can't be too surprised about this. Uh, no Byzantine tree this time around, but uh, you know, We'll see some other stuff, I'm sure. Ajam is doing fine over here. I would really like to see a Persia form. That would be really cool. Well, it certainly doesn't look like uh, the terrain is slowing down the Ottomans. They've eaten up the Serbs and the Albanians, as well as a bunch of the Turkish Baliks, minus this one province here. And they're currently pushing up into Moldavia and Hungary. Moldavia is, of course, a march of Hungary. The poor Pope man <laughs> has been eaten by Naples, which I feel I haven't seen a whole lot before, but it seems like their AI just in the last like patch or two has been much more aggressive towards the Pope. Not sure if they tweaked something, but uh, maybe. Meanwhile, the Mayam's name is not over Egypt anymore, and that is because they have pushed down into Arabia, taking a ton of land early on, because uh, if you guys would have watched my uh, video on my other channel, Chewy Shoot, which a lot of people don't know about, I do like daily Let's Plays over there. Um, they get a lot of really early permanent claims on a lot of regions, and uh, you know, you kind of just have to ride it out. They're riding it out and they're doing pretty good so far. Timmy has lost Farce. Ajam has full annexed them as well as part of Mushasha. So I do think we might see a Persia. It's hard to say. And then uh, QQ also got a new mission tree as well as AQ. They seem to be doing okay. QQ has eaten up a couple of the little minor tags over here. Uh, Georgia, one of the other tags that got a new mission tree in King of Kings has been eaten by QQ. So that's the thing. And we're only about 30 years in. Not a whole lot of time has passed, but Sweden absolutely is putting in that work. They've conquered a ton of land from Norway. Oslo is apparently Swedish. Uh, Skåne down here has been conquered by the Swedes from the Danes. Obviously, they're independent. And they even took a bunch of land over here from Novgorod, splitting it with Muscovy, who did end up getting St. Petersburg. So I think we might see a Russia. And it's kind of funny because right now, it's like you have Danzig and then you have the Teutonic Order. And corporate needs you to find the difference between these two pictures, but it's actually just the same picture. We're into the age of reformation here. We do also have a Persia that is formed, which is pretty cool. Timmy is just gone. <laughs> they don't exist anymore. Mamluks haven't changed much that I can see. Uh, I don't think they've actually gotten any new provinces, maybe one or two over here, one or two up here maybe, but they think the Ottomans are um, calling their name. Ottomans have also pushed up quite a bit here, uh, splitting Hungary with Bohemia and a little bit of Poland, but um, we'll see how things go. We do still have, you know, Hungary. Austria doing some weird Austria things, taking a couple of provinces here and there in the HRE. Um, HRE looking a little weird, mostly just up here in the north where Protestantism is, uh, taking hold of the region, but uh, you know, that's nothing too out of the ordinary. Not like France, who somehow isn't doing anything either. They haven't taken any of their cords back from England. England is doing okay, taking some land from Scotland and uniting most of uh, the Emerald Isle. They've also pushed down here into uh, the Basque country and into Northern Iberia, where Castile has taken some land from Portugal, 
and then lost a ton of land to Aragon. So I don't think we're going to see a Spain. I don't. I do not think we're going to see a Spain. Also, what's up with Florence over here blobbing in Italy? They took this province in Corsica from Genoa, and then they also took over Lucca. They took over Bologna. They took over Perugia. They're looking really good. Uh, I mean, if they could develop a little bit, they're going to be pretty strong. Though I imagine Ethiopia is probably the major reason why the MAMs haven't really done a whole lot more. Uh, they don't really have any room to expand except for over here. And Ethiopia may or may not actually be allied to some of these people and or Persia. Persia is probably guaranteeing some nations over here as well. Just AQ, who ate QQ and Hassa. So that's why MAMs haven't taken this land. And then the MAMs are allied to a couple of the other ones because the AI is... Uh, well, it's Paradox AI. But just look at all these claims up here. If they wanted to, if they were strong enough, they could do this no problem. I mean, obviously, they have to fight the Ottomans, but they have the ability to. They just, you know, need the need the chutzpah. BJ's just dead. Bahmanis uh, decided to siege down all their mountains and uh, just take them all. Now, there are two provinces down here in southern India. Manchu has formed and is pushing into Korea. And meanwhile, across the sea, Japan has Ashikaga, Auchi, and uh, Hatakiyama over here. The, uh, the major three on uh, the, the big islands over here. As far as colonial stuff goes, we do have a Cuba that has formed for Portugal, and that's about it. Newfoundland over here, as well as Bermuda, but uh, nobody in South America yet, except for Portugal over here on uh, Cape Verde, which isn't South America, but very close. Mamluks are in the number one spot, though not for long, probably. Once Ming embraces the institution, they'll pop back up to number one. Muscovy is actually doing quite well. They're probably going to form Russia at uh, Tech 10, if I had to guess. And then uh, once England and Portugal get that colonial game rolling, they're probably going to slide on up there. But I do love seeing Persia and the Mamluks in the top eight. Very good to see. And I actually don't know if I missed this or not, but the Commonwealth has formed. So we are in uh, that sort of region here. And we also have Austria over in Holland, but uh, Muscovy took back a lot of the land that Sweden had from uh, Novgorod and then some. Muscovy is looking incredibly scary. They are definitely going to be one of the contenders, especially when you consider that, um, you know, if somebody wants to siege them down, they're going to have to siege down a lot. And I mean a lot of mountain provinces. It's all mountains as far as the eye can see. Now, I am on an early access patch, but uh, for some reason, it's showing occupation lines on the simple terrain map mode as well. I assume that's not intentional, but uh, I don't know. Maybe it is. Could be useful. It, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Definitely some shenanigans afoot. The Ottomans have attacked Austria for this uh, Agrum province over here in Croatia. And Austria has called in like everybody. This is just literally just a conquest war. Um, so it's hard to say. The numbers are fairly even. And what is this mess going on over here? Again, almost like 90 years into the game, we have new tags that have popped out. Other tags are at war with other tags and just overall a huge mess over here. Even over here, Morocco's gone. Their former subjects are duking it out amongst themselves, but probably not going to be too long until Aragon comes a knocking. But you can never underestimate the Ottomans' ability to just completely dumpster themselves in a war. Quarter of a million men have died for this province over here in Croatia. I don't know why they did this, but they did it. They've lost a lot of men. The other guys have still lost quite a bit, almost 90,000 Austrians. But um, yeah, I don't know. Right now it's looking pretty unbalanced towards the Ottoman side. Probably going to win. They have the war goal. But um, at what cost? Hard to say. We already know they'll probably bounce back very quickly because it is the Ottomans and, you know, they do what Ottomans do. They actually got nerfed quite a bit in 1.36 as well. There was like a list of just Ottoman nerfs in uh, the patch notes. So, um... Maybe they need to nerf more. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they won. They took quite a bit of land over here. They didn't take any land from Muscovy, but they took quite a bit over here from Austria. So uh, Ottomans, very scary, very scary. And they've got a ton of claims down here as well. So it's only a matter of time before the Ottomans really blob out. I mean, more than they already have. So here's one for you. Uh, we have a Prussia that has formed. And uh, the best part is, is that they were released from the Commonwealth by Austria as the Teutonic Order, and they instantly form Prussia. So that is very cool. Also, we have a Bohemia, who is a personal union under Austria. Austria getting tons of claims, and uh, for some reason, Hamburg as well. Great Britain doing what Great Britain does, and uh, actually pushing down into France now, as well as taking some land in Iberia, touching up their borders over here. Ottomans continuing to um, be the most terrifying thing I've ever seen pushing up a bit more into Russia and down into Egypt. And meanwhile, Persia is actually doing really good pushing down here around uh, the southern portions of Arabia into here with their subject of Hassa. And now they're over into Gujarat fighting off some rebels. But hey, 
that's pretty good. And speaking of Gudra, they are losing a little bit right now by the looks of it, but uh, they are currently one of the major contenders for being blobs, but John Poor and Balmon is currently duking it out. So still in flux, but uh, you know, we've got somewhat of an equilibrium over here. Ming decided that they didn't want to deal with Oirat, so they just annexed him, I guess. Meanwhile, Japan is uh, annexing Manchuria. I think I've heard of this story before. I don't think it's going to end well for the Japanese. Of course, we do have the big Russian bear, and they are beginning their relentless push east, hooking around Siberia here with their frontiers. The English colonies over on the east coast continue to flourish with Newfoundland and the 13 colonies. Down in the south, we have British Louisiana with uh, some Portuguese stuff in the region, as well as over here. And then the French have made their way over New South America as well. And then the Portuguese doing their thing with Brazil and Rio de Prata. Nothing too surprising there. Castile's trying to get over here into Guinea, but it's just, it's not gonna work, man. It's not gonna work. Whew, absolutism is here. Who's not here? Commonwealth, well, I mean, not in any meaningful capacity. There's a couple of provinces, but they done got gobbled up between Russia, the Ottomans, and Prussia, as well as Austria, by the looks of it. Ah, uh, rip Poland. France continues to get eaten as well. HRE is a mess. I don't even want to look at it, which isn't super surprising. It was absolutely ravaged by the Reformation. The Protestants ended up winning the League War because Austria is very strong, but yeah, it's it's not going anywhere since then. But who has gone somewhere is Castile, specifically out of Iberia. They even gave back Portugal's lands, which is pretty nice. And where did they go, you might ask? Sao Tome. Because why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? The colonial game is slowly progressing over here on the east, but uh, Mexico is uh, basically entirely conquered by the Portuguese in 50, 60 years. So good on Portugal. France is slowly doing their thing, but uh, they're not doing so good back on the home front. So not too surprised to see them not really doing a whole lot. And Portugal continues their shenanigans down here in the south with Peru joining the fray. Former Castilian lands being conquered by Hausa. Very funny. Like that's, that's super, super funny. I love that. And I did miss this, but apparently Fernando Poe is Brittany. So uh, Brittany's joined the colonial game as well. Persia has been steady, hasn't really done a whole lot, but uh, I imagine that they're developing quite a bit. I think absolutism, they get 20% dev cost as uh, an age objective. So that's pretty good. Meanwhile, the big Russian bear continues to push east, continues to, um, you know, expand. And somehow, some way, the Ming is hanging in there. Uh, they conquered a bunch of land from Manchu, splitting it with Japan, conquered the rest of Oirat, and uh, they're just, chilling they're doing fine they even took a couple provinces over here in northern korea which is uh not something you see very often i think we do have portuguese australia being colonized and i hate to say it but uh it does look like the ottomans have some overseas territories as well the mad lads actually went exploration as their fourth idea after going admin quantity quality this is uh some meta picks for the ottomans in my opinion <laughs> this was the case last time and even behind on an institution the ottomans are the number one great power by a long shot with portugal only because of their colonial empire in the second third spot is austria looking good but still half the ottomans so mm, definitely something to be watching out for but aragon with the fourth spot russia in the fifth ming in the sixth spot a legit ming who has not collapsed with ethiopia in the seventh and then venice in the eighth because uh okay I actually missed Ethiopia, so that's cool. I like that. How Venice has 500 development packed in here after they've already lost a bunch of their land, I have literally no idea, but they do. We've got a little over 100 years left. Looks like uh, Ming has been cut down to size. Bengal looking uh, looking like Bengal, that's for sure. We've got Deccan over here doing really well, which is uh, definitely cool to see. I always love it when you see these Indian formables. Malacca, the dominant nation over here in uh, Southeast Asia. But uh, making our way up here, Ottoman Arabia split by Neapolitan Mashriq, cutting off the Ottomans from um, the Balkans. So yeah, that's a thing. I guess uh, Naples decided to uh, conquer the Ottomans. All right, but they went a little bit farther and they actually conquered most of Italy as well. And Venice got their land back from the Ottomans and then some. So I like to see that. Also, for some reason, Styria is independent within Venice. Austria is huge, but then they lost a bunch of land to Venice, including Vienna. So uh, definitely a weird one. Definitely, definitely a weird one. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that Sweden fell under a PU of Austria. That's the only way I can imagine that these borders happened like this. Very cool if true. If not, very cool still. <laughs> they conquered them, so. Shout out Austria and Scandinavia. Also shout out East Frisia, who doesn't actually own East Frisia. 
Always good to see. Great Britain doing incredibly well over here with Austria and France and them splitting regular France over here with their capital in whatever this province is. And the new world is mostly red and blue up here in the north, but we do have an Alaska from Russia, which is pretty cool. The only French holdings in the new world is going to be in French Columbia, and then mostly Brazil in the south with a couple of uh, random provinces over here from uh, Aragon. So, all right. The French own the Congo, so that's a thing. And the Portuguese own Australia as well as uh, Australia. Taking a look at the development map out here in the 1730s, it doesn't look like much has really happened. A bit of development over here where there's a lot of one province minor nations in Germany. But aside from that, you're not really seeing a whole lot of development, which definitely makes a lot more sense because the dev cost is quite a bit more when you're rocking with mountains. And the Ottomans remain a great power there, only uh, falling down to that sixth spot with a little under half the development of Austria, who had half the development of the Ottomans last time we looked. So the tables have turned for sure. We also have Russia behind them just barely for the number two spot. Portugal, though it's mostly just their colonial stuff. Great Britain, which again, mostly colonial stuff. Bengal in the fifth spot, no surprise, they are massive. Aragon down below the Ottomans there in the seventh spot, which is very cool to see. And then Ethiopia in the eighth, who still controls a large portion of Africa. And uh, that's about it. We end this run with this. This is the last of the Ottoman Empire, what was once the number one great power, fully occupied by a new contender, well, an old contender that's formed a new contender. I'm sure plenty of you guys can figure it out. Austria formed Germany and is um, terrifying. Doesn't have the best borders I've ever seen, but uh, doesn't necessarily have to, to uh, be able to absolutely steamroll through anybody they want to. Uh, maybe minus this Neapolitan Levant slash Venice. Hard to say, but... Uh, Germany looking incredibly good. They've actually taken quite a bit of land from Prussia, who also exists, which is, you know, quite good. Over here, we have Portugal, who is uh, running it through on Aragon, uh, getting split between Great Britain and Portugal. So that's that's pretty good. I Usually you don't see Portugal going like militarist. They usually just colonize and they're like an AFK bot the whole game. But I guess they decided to choose violence this time around. Ethiopia just went strong. They really did go strong, like the whole game. They they were just so consistent. I love it. France ended up losing the Congo, losing some to Castile. And uh, you're gonna notice that Castile's name is over here. And that's because their capital is literally over here in the Congo, which is uh, super, super funny. And then we have Kasanji over here, who has probably one of my favorite flags in the entire game. I just, I love this. I don't know why it's so funny to me, but I just love that flag. Out East things look pretty similar, uh, all things considered. Persia definitely collapsed which is sad, but um, you know, the fact that a massive Russia came in and took up some of it, I think is pretty cool. We have Belushistan that popped out, Hormuz that popped out, Oman that popped out. Yeah, safe to say Persia's seen better days, but we do have an Armenia over here on Lake Van. So take from that what you will, that's pretty cool. Russia even came over and took Korea as well as Northern Japan. So uh, yeah, that, that's definitely a bummer. Ming was very steady. I'm surprised they didn't collapse. They never collapsed. They lost land, but they never collapsed, so. I would call that definitely a win when it comes to the mandate of China. Down in South America, it's even more blue, uh, well, light blue, <laughs> as uh, Colombia has broken free from France. And up north, nothing has changed in the last 100 or even 150 years. So, you know, a little bit of stability in the region, I think, would do good for them. The world is incredibly Catholic with a nice chunk of Orthodox over here. It was quite Shia over here, but uh, the Orthodox have taken over there. And then uh, Coptic Ethiopia has done quite a bit of conversions over here pushing over a bit over here, but you know, still pretty cool to see. I always love seeing Coptic do well, especially considering that uh, it never does. And finally, we get to see big American culture. I feel like American culture is never big in America, but here it is, American and English, with Portuguese and Muscovite making up the rest. French Columbia, okay. And then Brazilian and Portuguese down here in the South with like two or three Castilian provinces over here in uh, Incan land, so. All right. Yeah, I definitely think there was some culture conversion going on over here in uh, this region in Mongolia and Manchuria. I definitely don't think that's Muscovite in 1444. I wonder how they got out there. You know, maybe by train. Maybe they got uh, sent out to Siberia. Prison work camps and whatnot. Gulags. And yeah, the poor Baltic cultures all got taken over by Novgorodian and by the Russians. Huh? That's not really a surprise. Anybody who lives in the Baltic will know. Uh, that is, uh, you know, not super unrealistic. And all things considered, I would say that development did more than I expected. I expected like nothing, but we definitely got a lot of green over here, way more than in 1444. India looks good, China looks good, and Korea always looks good because Korea just sits there and devs that that zen, that uh, internal stability, doing nothing but sitting there and diving. And then there's just this 
random province here in South Africa. 35 development because you already know it. Coal. And that's going to be a trend that you're going to see a lot of. 33, 38, 46, 49, 64 development over here in Cumbrese with a 59 over here in this province. Another 52 here, 67 in Aachen. Actually insane numbers. The AI is spending hundreds and hundreds of mana to develop that sweet, sweet coal. But don't worry, lads. The coal that's getting developed over in Germany, it's all clean coal. It's actually good for the environment that you could argue. So better than nuclear. Definitely better than nuclear. Nuclear is bad for the environment. Coal, that's where it's at. All farmlands was cool. All mountains was really fun. Welcome to 1.36, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I certainly did. I think we're going to be doing some fun stuff here on the channel. I've, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of scripting, actually. I think we might end up doing a couple of uh, like top five, top tens on the channel. Let me know how you feel about that sort of stuff. I know that the AI only stuff has maybe gotten a bit stale. I wouldn't say that it's not fun to make because it definitely is. But, you know, views have gone down. So I know that there's not as much of a market for it as there used to be. But, uh, you know, if you guys would like some guides or those sorts of things, make sure you leave them in the comments below. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I really do appreciate you. I hope you leave a like on the video and subscribe if you aren't already so we can get that mega campaign going. And you watching right now i hope that you have an absolutely wonderful day special thanks to kaiser dar of akadia geol gamus 23 ian powell hannon fodder josh kipchinski agent rhino blonde damon isaiah rover bubba j saronska ricardo cobalt rex rex nathan albright and many more